Hey guys, I'm Abby Jo Flowers. And I'm Madeline Lass. And welcome to the JagCast. Today we're going to be talking about the Jackson water crisis. For about three weeks now, Jackson residents have been without clean, drinkable water. As of September 12th, they have water pressure back, but their water is still unclean. You may be wondering, what is the Jackson water crisis? Well, it's an ongoing public health crisis in and around the city of Jackson. Currently, more than 1,500,000 people are without clean water. So what caused the Jackson water crisis? Since the 1970s, Jackson's water system has been neglected and has been struggling. Over the years, residents have constantly been over a boil, under a boil water notice. But this past August, heavy, constant rain caused the Pearl River to flood at record levels. A water pump at the OB water treatment plant, the plant that provides Jackson's water, was unable to keep up with the flooding. This led to a lack of water pressure and lack of clean water at Jackson residencies. Um, there is a lot of things people can do to help. A lot of churches or organizations are taking water bottle donations, um, even a lot of schools. Mass and Central's was last week, but um, even if you missed that, there's still tons of organizations. All you have to do is look it up to find a place to bring water to. Or you can help with distributing the water, which is also really important um, because, you know, there are sites that people don't come to get water, but it's not always that easy. There are a lot of Jackson residents who don't have cars, so they have no way to really get to the sites easily. Or um, I even know there's some people who might be disabled or in a wheelchair, and it can be really hard for them to go, like, go out, get in the car, and drive all the way to the city just to get water. So another thing that you can do to help is going, probably not younger people, but adults definitely can go out and to with organizations and go to individual houses to deliver that water. Because that's a really important thing that people need. Because this is affecting all kinds of people, you know. People who ha can really easily get to these base camps that are distributing or people who may be stuck in their houses. And so there's a lot of ways and a lot of things that need to be done to get people their clean water. So, Maddie, how is this affecting, like, businesses or schools or any um, organization in at Jackson? Well, many schools like Millsaps College and public schools like Jackson Public Schools are having to go virtual due to them not having water and they need water for many things including like air conditioning um, and yeah I talked with Millsaps residents and they said that they were allowed to go virtual for a week but like people like athletes and stuff had to stay there and just kind of tough it out but um, yeah schools are having to go out of their way to like provide uh, accessible water to their students like bringing in um, tra like trailers with like a bathroom in it and stuff? Um, I think it's obviously having a really negative effect because like you already said, water is used for a lot more things than just drinking. Um, if you're a restaurant, obviously you need water to cook pretty much anything. You have, to, you have to offer up water as one of your beverages. It helps with air conditioning. It helps, um, you know, restrooms, toilets, sinks. Pretty much um, there's a ton of things that water is needed for a lot more than just you know food so even establishments that don't just serve food like schools or churches and things they're all having to shut down or rethink ways that they conduct business because water is so integral to everything and they don't have it. Um, I think another t topic we can sit on or um, talk about, not sit on, another topic we can talk about is a lot of people are comparing this to the Flint water crisis um, it was a water crisis that happened in April of 2014, um, and it was when there was a lot. Um, there was lead leaking into the water of Flint, Michigan, um, and the water was contaminated, and it was causing disease. And and about at least 12 people were killed from this. And this water crisis actually didn't end until June of 2016, so about two years. And so I mean that's like crazy to think about because I think a lot of people are just thinking well this water crisis it'll be over soon you know we have to get the water back up and running but this could be a really long-term situation for residents in Jackson and that's just an interest that's a um, weird thing to think about but it's something we need to think about because how are we gonna help the people in the city survive yeah also um, in order to that the Flint water crisis went on for like a really long time because you know it wasn't getting the attention it deserved like it was only getting attention for so long and I think I don't want that to ha happen to um you know Jackson uh so 
I think, you know, it's definitely important that, you know, the government steps in and passes, like, legislation and stuff to help and provide cleaner water. Yeah, and I think it's also important to talk about this isn't, a, like, a really new problem in Jackson. While Jackson has always had water, they have been struggling with their water since, like we said earlier, the 1970s. Um, they are at least always on more than one boil water nose a year, usually at least three or four. And even before the flooding of the Pearl River, Jackson was actually on a boil water notice since July of 2022. So this isn't just like a brand new thing, like a freak accident. It's really important that the government officials and the public are paying attention to these systems because if you're not checking up on them and you're making sure that they are working right, then you will get a catastrophic event like this. So it's really important to make sure that, to keep your government accountable and just to make sure, you know, that you are passing bills and that people are paying attention. And, you know, like it may seem like a small problem, but it can really quickly turn into a huge event like this. So um, again, as um, so again, if you want to help with this Jackson water crisis, there are tons of ways you can help. You can find an organization literally anywhere. You can find one online, see if your church is helping with it, your, what your school's doing. They are, are, they are taking water bottles, plastic water bottles and packs. Um, the more they can get, the better. They need so much water right now. Um, and you or you just perf you can go to these, um, crap, let me think what they call And you can go to these locations that they're setting up um, where they are distributing the water. People can come pick up how much water they need and then they, you can help with that. And there are also um, organizations that are going to individual houses that may, may not be, where people live that may not be able to get out of their house and giving them the water. So those are ways that you can help. Um, also, you could always email like your state legislature, like um, representatives, uh, just to say that you think that it's important for them to be focusing on, you know, the crisis that's going on in Jackson. You can write about, you know, how we need more funding for the water, how yeah, you need to um, update Jackson's pipes and water systems, and or even you know writing about just how underfunded Jackson may be and how there's a lot that needs to be helped with that. Also, just talking about the water crisis can help because there are lots of people, even in Mississippi, who may not know the full story or know exactly what's going on. So even just talking about it or sharing what's going on with people, that can help getting the word out there. This has been Abby Jo Flowers and Madeline Lass for the Jagcast.